as you can see, people are just watching and waiting for some of these results to trickle in. When we arrived on the scene, there was a woman right outside of this home sitting on the ground in handcuffs. But check this out. Row after row of new shiny snowmobiles. Kind of a neat sight, but this is not where they're supposed to be at this time of year. And I love my job this week because I get to talk to all these amazing people. Joining me now is the big bopper's son, JP. It started with Evelyn Miller's disappearance from her home in Floyd and has now come full circle with charges filed seven years later. Now, besides having an ice scraper in your car, it's also a good idea to keep a shovel handy. Many of us have been in the same situation. We are winding down the week with a little fun here in Central Park in Mason City. It is the Friday Night Live kickoff event for their concert series. Well, any more, a phone like this is a common sight. It connects us to the rest of the world. But according to a recent study, we're using them so much that you may be working more than you know. Well, law enforcement around the area are cracking down on drivers tonight in a joint project. KIMT News 3's Natalie Tendo went along for the ride this evening. She is in Studio 3 with more. Natalie, this operation a little bit unusual, right? Well, yes, Sarah, seatbelts were the main concern tonight. Clear Lake PD and Mason City PD, the Sheriff's Department, and the Iowa State Patrol all were participating in the nighttime seatbelt enforcement project. It's a coordinated effort not just to give tickets, but to make the community aware of how important safety belts really are. Hello, sir. Yeah, how are you doing? Good. Have driver's license, insurance card, and registration with you. These police officers are on the lookout for one main thing this evening, seat belts. We can increase our enforcement of nighttime safety belt violations. Um, Hopefully we can drive our fatality statistics or fatality rate down. They're putting together a sting-like operation to catch violators. And here's how it works. This man, posing as a panhandler, actually works for the state patrol. He has his eye out for drivers and passengers not wearing their belts. And when he spots one, he lets the half-dozen police officers on standby know. The road to the stop sign coming off of Plaza Drive by McDonald's, he didn't put the seatbelt on until he got to the stoplight. Then those in the patrol cars take over. The reason I was stopping this evening, need to wear that safety belt a little earlier. Each department likes to conduct these types of projects every once in a while, but it's no small feat. It takes planning, coordination, and money. Luckily, grant dollars help to fund the operation. I'm going to issue a warning this evening on proof insurance citation on safety belt violation. Um, safety belt violation, obviously is the single most important thing you can do wearing that safety belt. And even though the violators get a $127 ticket, they hope it's a bigger lesson learned than just an emptier wallet. First of all, because it saves lives. Uh, second of all, tonight, because the roads are terrible, and if you were in an accident, it could save your life. And most get the point. It was an error on my part. I sure think seatbelt wearing is a, is, is a safe uh, thing to do. I just had a little lapse there. Now, Lieutenant Schaefer tells me that during the day, more than 90% of Iowans use their seatbelt. However, at night, 45% of accidents that have fatalities were not using seatbelts. He says if it means giving out a few tickets during a seatbelt check, then going to the scene of a fatality that could have been avoided by using a seatbelt, it's worth it. Sarah? It was so green. Four-year-old Kylie Thompson is back on her mother's arms after an eventful night. Well, I was trying to find my way to this house. She was playing at a friend's home when she wandered into a nearby cornfield and got lost. Was it a little scary? Well, it was a little. Kylie's mom, Heather, says she had just checked on the kids. Not five minutes later, Sydney came in and said that she couldn't find Kylie. And we all went looking for her. And after some searching, they called police, who continued to look for the child, along with nearly 300 volunteers. And their efforts lasted hours. Everybody is tired. Um, you're upset. You're feeling um, heart, heart sunk. I mean, it's, it's such an awful feeling because you expect the worst. There's water in the area. Um, there are wild coyotes, apparently, in this field. It was tough for the search crews and even more difficult for Kylie's family. I was freaking out. I didn't know where she was. I was like, why is it taking so long for us to find her? As you can see, searching for a four-year-old in corn that's almost as tall as an adult is not an easy task. 
As Kylie continued wandering through the field, crews looking for her were about to be called in for the night. And then for some reason, one of the guys suggested, let's do one more push at an area that we didn't really saturate. And that was when we were successful. She was found by a volunteer, and even better, she was safe and unharmed. The nice thing about living in rural Iowa is the fact that they still care about their neighbors. It's those neighbors from near and far that have helped this family get through a scary situation. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for bringing my daughter back to me. And the number of people surviving cancer is improving thanks to the dedication of people who know how much the disease can take. Tonight, North Iowans are gathering together at NIAC to relay for life. KIMT News 3's Natalie Tindall shows us why it is such an important event. As you walk through the many groups of people here pledging their support for Relay for Life, you'll also find luminaries, each with the names of the people or person they're here for. This year's Relay is all about remembering, celebrating, and fighting back against cancer. Everyone has a different word that comes to mind when you mention cancer. Survivor. My sister. Sad family. A beatable. Mad. Hope. And most people have a personal experience that goes with it. For my sister, she is 24 years old and was diagnosed with breast cancer. Johnson's group now knows more than ever how important a cure is, and that's why they're joining hundreds of other people to relay for life. We celebrate the survivors, the cancer survivors of Sargota County. We remember those that have lost their battle with cancer, and we fight back against this dreaded disease. So with one symbolic gesture of breaking through cancer, all of these folks, touched by the disease in some way, start their relay laps. It gets kind of emotional. I lost my sister to ovarian cancer and kind of takes me back and we remember those times together that we had and um, just remember those people that we've lost. Each team has been raising money up until this event. It all goes to the American Cancer Society for research, treatments, and advocacy. We have to just keep fighting this battle because we can win it. If, if enough people work at it and we continue to work at it, we'll, we'll win. It just takes a lot of money and effort and time. All things these teams are willing to put forward. I just want her to know that I'm here to support her and I want everybody else with cancer to know that there's so many people behind them. So whether you're remembering, celebrating, or fighting, this relay is all about making sure you know you're supported. You're not alone. You know, sometimes you think you go through this on your own. Um, you think you've done it. It's hard and, you've, and you're the only one that's been through it. Not so. Now one of the big changes for this year's relay is the fact that it's outside. Organizers say they haven't been able to do that for three years. In Mason City, Natalie Tendall, KINC News 3.